second half of this video will focus on invasive plants. There's a number of invasive plants in Virginia, so many so that we could spend all day talking about them. For the purpose of this video today, I'm going to be breaking them down into the four main groups of invasive plants and then highlighting an example of each species from each group. Those four groups are trees, shrubs, grasses, and vines. We'll start with the first group of invasive plants, invasive trees. There are a number of invasive trees in Virginia, but the two that we'll focus on for today's video are Alanthus altissima, tree of heaven, and then calorie pear. Alanthus altissima, which I'm standing in front of a little cluster of them here at the DOF headquarters, um, is an invasive species from Asia that is problematic for many reasons. It has a heavy seed crop. It has allelopathic tendencies which means it has a chemical secretion that it puts in the ground that can prevent or disrupt the, other, the growth of other plants around it. It also has a stink to it. If you <laughs> have ever smelled it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Calorie pear is the other invasive tree that I'll highlight for this section, most noticeable in spring when it flowers, often before anything else comes out. Calorie pear is interesting as an invasive because it was actually intentionally introduced as a cultivar as a number of cultivars, such as Bradford, which is commonly sold, um, which can cross-pollinate and produce viable seed. Initially, when this was brought over, it was thought that it would not produce viable seed and would not be an issue. But since it can produce viable seed with the cultivars, it has escaped and is frequently found along farm edges, roadsides, um, and many different locations. The seed is spread by birds who feed on it. Calorie pear is problematic because it has thorns that it has created, which are very strong and can puncture tires. Calorie pear is also problematic because they are structurally very weak, um, even though they're planted frequently. They're able to outcompete other species very quickly, and they smell just like Tree of Heaven. For each of these species, wherever they establish, they quickly outcompete other native species that may be trying to grow. You can control um, invasive trees through a number of ways. You can do foliar sprays during the, when the trees are fully leafed out. And you can also do cut stump for trees under three inches in diameter, where you cut the trees and then quickly apply an herbicide with either a sponge, a squirt bottle, um, or a paintbrush. If for trees that are larger than three inches in diameter, you can do the hack and squirt method where you use a hatchet or a small ax and you make a series of angular cuts around the circumference of the tree and you drop or inject herbicide into those cuts um, for a direct application of the chemical. Invasive shrubs in Virginia are problematic because like most invasive plant species, they outcompete the native species that should be growing in their place. Many of the shrubs that are invasive to Virginia were actually intentionally planted, often as hedgerows or natural fences that have since escaped and now are commonly found in urbanized areas, understory of forests, and along fence rows and old fields. Because these plants were often planted and then escaped, or aided by movement of wildlife that sometimes eat the berries that these plants produce. Control of these shrubs are often difficult. Examples of invasive shrubs in Virginia include Chinese privet, autumn olive, and multiflora rose. I happen to be standing beside multiflora rose, and it's kind of all around me right now. <laughs> um, so you can see how it has escaped and taken over the understory. Control of these shrubs can be done with foliar applications of herbicide when the shrubs are fully leafed out, or for larger infestations and thicker diameter stems, it can also be a cut stump application where that herbicide is painted or applied directly to the fresh cut. Vines in Virginia that are invasive are troublesome for many reasons. One of the reasons that they're troublesome is their ability to climb on trees. They can sometimes girdle the trees that they're climbing on, and often, by the time they've reached the crown of the tree, their weight of the vine itself can actually break out the crown and disfigure the tree that it's growing on. Common invasive vines in Virginia include English ivy, bittersweet, porcelain berry, honeysuckle, kudzu, and mile a minute. 
You may notice that a number of the species that I just mentioned were once commonly planted and are still found on the landscape, such as English ivy and porcelain berry. These are examples of intentionally introduced plants that have since escaped and become invasive in nature. Control of invasive vines is frequently a one-two punch because you can sever the vine at a height that you can reach, and then you can do an herbicide application such as the cut stump with that vine that's severed. It's important that when you're cutting these vines, you separate at least a foot between the two sections because these vines can actually grow back together if it's shorter than that. If you have the ability to reach the foliage of these vines during the growing season, you can do a foliar application of herbicide as well. English ivy is one of the vines that was commonly planted in the landscape and has since escaped and can be found climbing trees. For some of these vines, such as English ivy, you can sever it at the base, um, ensuring that you've cut enough room that it does not reconnect. And just doing that alone will kill the vine um, and the rest of the foliage at the top and the vine itself will wither and die. It's important that once these vines are killed, you do not try and pull them out of the tree as this can pose a major safety hazard. These vines have the ability to break limbs and crowns with their weight, and if you pull on them to try and remove them from the tree, this might have those branches and crowns fall with them. Invasive grasses are a large problem in Virginia's forests. These grasses have the ability to overtake forest floors and halt regeneration of native species. In doing this, they reduce the biodiversity and threaten the overall structure of the forest by making a relatively even age stand. This has negative consequences for wildlife as well because it reduces the availability of food for them to feed on. Two of the major invasive grasses in Virginia include Japanese stilt grass, which is behind me and is currently dormant for the season, and wavy leaf grass. Japanese stilt grass has a relatively large distribution throughout Virginia's forests whereas wavy leaf is more localized in concentration and found in smaller populations. Also related to wildlife is how that these grasses can spread. Wavy leaf produces a sticky substance on the seed during fall, and this adheres to anything that passes through it when it's seeding. Ways that these grasses can be controlled include hand pulling or mowing prior to seed maturity in late summer, or by an application of foliar herbicide when the grasses are leafed out. For both of these species, it's important to note that multiple years of control is required due to the large seed bed and root masses. There's a number of great resources out there available for control of invasive insects and plants in Virginia. If you go to the Virginia Department of Forestry website and then scroll to the Forest Health tab, most of these will be available. For a comprehensive guide on identification of invasive plants and control available for them, there are two really great resources available. Um, one is the identification of invasive plants and the other is management for invasive plants that's put out by the U.S. Forest Service. And the links for those books is linked in this video. Thanks for watching this video on invasive species in Virginia. We hope that you found it helpful and informative. If you have any other questions about invasive species, please reach out to the Forest Health Program at the Virginia Department of Forestry.